Greetings from Seoul, Korea, and welcome to the GSL Code S. Today, quite possibly one of the most important days out there because we have two non-Koreans starting off our match here. E.G. Hydra against Liquid Juno. Uh, I am Tasis with me as Artosis. Artosis! Oh my god. Are you ready? Tasteless, this is the most exciting day of the GSL ever, in my opinion. Yeah. Okay, not only do we have the legendary Nana taking on Marine King Prime, one of the best Terrans in the whole world, with a, a style only his own, that alone would make for an amazing night, a best of five in the round of eight. Are you kidding me? That would be amazing. But we have the main event tonight, Tasteless. It's yes. going to be Team Liquid.net's Jinro against EG's Hydra. I cannot wait. This is actually too important. We have to do things. You have to tell everyone to go watch this right now. Spread the word. You. This is and what we're going to do. Computer. All right, there's this thing called a hashtag on Twitter. You'll yes. shift and three. It's the number sign, the pound sign. Yeah, the pound sign. Put that in GSL. Tweet it. Tweet that it. plus GSL. Say whatever we you want about the We want to spread the, the word as many people watching GSL right. as possible. If you get enough of those up there, then it becomes a trending topic on Twitter. Go and do it. And if do you it. don't have a Twitter account, first of all, get a like. Second of all, sign up and do that for us. Okay, for the Code A round of eight match results, we had OGS top a win 2-0. After that, SC Foyu 2-0, and of course, two more 2-0s. Zenex Beyond and Fox Lin, pretty short day. Moon losing to Lin. That was our Warcraft 3 play that moved on. Well, the first day of the Code S round of eight, we had I'm Nest T taking out Choya Foyu 3-0, and I'm MVP taking out TSL, Soki Su, 3-0 as well. Those are two of our players in the top four. We will be getting the next two today out of these two matches. Yeah. EG Hydra against Liquid Jinro and Marine King Prime.we against OGS Nada. A super exciting day. Let's make sure everyone knows about it. Post on the forums. Make those little number signs in GSL on Twitter. Do Hashtag everything. It. Tell each other through Facebook. Get those Reddit threads up to the top. That's right. Yeah. Neo Gaff community, you guys make your threads. <laughs> I'm telling you, man, every single site out there. We want to spread the word as yeah. much as humanly possible. You know, SC Legacy, the YouTubes, Huskies people, HDs people. You know, everybody needs to get together, tell everyone to watch this. This is going to be so awesome. I have no idea how this I is going to turn I think both of our out. matches today are actually basically 50-50. Could go either way, uh, Hydra and Jinro. Jenner, of course, representing TeamLiquid.net. Hydra, uh, a good friend of ours and a teammate of mine on EG Evil Geniuses. And, of course, the Terran versus Terran. We basically have um, new school against old school. Yeah. you got Marine King Prime against Nada. Uh, Marine King Prime, known as Boxer in Season 2, losing to Nesty. No shame there. No, of course and not. And Nesty, excuse me, Nada, um, just a legend, the most consistent Terran player of all time in StarCraft 1. Here, uh, duking it out. It is an amazing group of players here today, yeah. Tasteless. Seriously, if people are going to watch a day of GSL, please watch this day because this is just, we have two non-Korean players in the top eight facing yeah. each other. This could be a round of four, even a finals match. They're two of the best players in the entire world, and we are going to see them clash. It's going to be epic and amazing. GSL, the largest, biggest, bestest, not just eSports show, but TV show in general and in the world. To thank for that, we have oh. the sponsors. Oh, yeah. Thank you, sponsors. Sony Ericsson. Yes. You're going to get a nice big kiss. Mwah. And that is, of course, from Julia Roberts' Tasteless Lips. <laughs> my, my Julia Roberts yeah, Lips. Man. Yeah. That's what the sponsors get for supporting eSports, spreading the word. Uh, we love you guys. Also, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. Um, if you do get the chance, encourage your friends to purchase a premium ticket. If they can't watch live, maybe they can't watch you know, some of the absurd hours that it would be uh, elsewhere in the world when we're not here in Korea. That money does go to improve our stream, uh, which has already been improved drastically. We've got a lot of good feedback from that. Uh, the more premium tickets we sell, we're just going to take that money, dump it in uh, to the server, and that magically makes it better somehow. I don't know. All I know how to do is talk about this game. But it I know it does money, Tasteless. That's how it puts it's out It's hungry. Bandwidth. It wants money. That's my guess, and you need to give least. it to it. Um, but uh, on to our yeah. first match. Seriously. This Seriously. Is, Dude, this is so cool. What a match. Yeah. Wow. Hydra, um, known as a macro Zerg. He was a macro Terran in StarCraft 1. Probably the best non-Korean player <laughs> Let's watch at the end of this. Let's check out this video, though, before we say any more. 
Oh, that picture of ta of I tasteless uh, the Gracnoceros is what I would call that. <laughs> All right, here we have Idra in his leather gracket. Tasteless, tell us a little bit about Idra and his wonderful team, EG. EG, an amazing team, sponsors like Steel Series and Intel. They, uh, we actually are really rooting for Idra. Uh, we really want him to win. We're really excited. Uh, this is a guy who was known as a macro. Terran and StarCraft One, probably the best non-Korean. Uh, StarCraft player at the uh, end of StarCraft 1. Now we're here in StarCraft 2. Um, Idra, a macro Zerg. He's generally known, actually almost entirely known, for, for doing standard safe play. Doesn't like to rush early, doesn't like to end the game. Considers that cheesy, not worthwhile. Uh, Genro. Genro. You've angered the Kraken. And there's the Kraken. Oh, there's Genro. <laughs> oh, oh he's my done, God. Man. I briefly, briefly we saw he took off his lower part of the body. <laughs> He's, he's not even bleeding. That's how hard he's squeezing him. Wow. Um, yeah, he's a very standard, solid Zerg player. Um, General's going to have to really mix up his style here if he's going to take on a player like that. Now to our other player, TeamLiquid.net's very own Jinro, formerly known as Frozen Arbiter on the forums, a longtime admin. This guy looked over the strategy section on TeamLiquid.net for a very long time. He protected it like an angel. He did. Uh, TeamLiquid.net, of course, the greatest English StarCraft website in the entire world. Largest it, as well. Yeah, by, by far, far. In way. Uh, an amazing website and an amazing player has come out of that. Great job to Nazgul in the little app factory for getting this guy out here and getting him the practice, the training he needs to become a beastly, a godly macro Terran in StarCraft 2. Yeah. Was actually, he switched races as well. He was a Protoss in StarCraft 1. Not really a top, top level, but a very good Protoss he was, in StarCraft He was high 1. enough to be competitive, I'd say. Oh, absolutely, But never yes. a pro gamer level for the foreign scene. All right, now to the map lineup. We're going to have Zelnaga Caverns first, second, Metalopolis third, Shakaras Plateau, fourth, Jungle Basin, and if we finally do get to a fifth game, it's going to be on classic Blizzard map, Lost Temple. That's right. Now, this map pool is really cool. Look, Idra took out Delta Quadrant. Genro took out Blistering Sands. I do want to point out, I think Zelnaga Caverns, the first match, is going to be the most important map of all. The next two after Absolutely. that are going to be the maps that Idra feels best on. The two after that are going to be the maps that Genro feels best on. So it's going to come down a lot, I think, to Zelnaga Caverns. Note, previously, Idra did lose to Genro on Jungle Basin. That's right. On uh, their last encounter. Genro played a beautiful, beautiful game there. And that is map four. I don't know if Genro is actually beatable on that map. Uh, unless he loses a ton of SCVs in the early yeah, game. Yeah, that map's pretty tough for Zerg because, of course, you are expanding closer to your opponent. Oh, my God, Artosis. The countdown has begun. Oh, Head-to-head. General against Hydra. Let's do this. It's on in the red at the bottom left. They call him Hydra. He's nicknamed Grack by Slayer's Boxer. So I guess that makes me say, release the Kraken! Hydra. There he is. Handsomest nerd I've ever seen. That's right. Now to our blue Terran. Same color uh, as the theme on his site. Team Liquid. That boys came pretty fast. He's from TeamLiquid.net. And there he is, the handsomest nerd I've ever seen. And that is actually oh. great. <laughs> that is actually perfect. That's actually perfect. Because Jinro is a perfect human being. He's like the nicest guy ever. And then, of course, Greg uh, Idra, EG Idra, is quite known as a villain sometimes. 
And we're going to go straight into the options menu right now. Okay. Yeah. Got to check out, out those know, options. Have... See what's going on in there. Show you guys the options. Do you guys, do you guys want ultra graphics or like low graphics, dude? <laughs> we want ultra graphics so we can see every bloody moment of this game. Note, um, you could see Jinro's position there with the depot. Space efficient, putting it in front of the, in front of the, in front of the refinery so you can sink it. That's right. That's right. It's a good way to... You know, but can that, can that depot sink to the lows that Idra is going to pull with Banelings this game, Tasteless? Could be. We will see. Now, Idra, um, of course, we were speaking to him beforehand, um, before we went live here, and um, he was basically saying if he wins the first game, the set should be easy. Yeah, it's the first game is the crucial game, Tasteless. Uh, notice Idra's going to go for a hatchery first build. Jinro, uh, on the other hand, Tasteless, oh, look at that beautiful studio we're in. Jinro, on the other hand, no second barracks. So there's a few choices you can go on this map, obviously, as openers. Uh, and if you go hatchery first and they go two barracks, it can be quite hard to hold. But Jinro has not done that, so Idris' build is going to be pretty safe and solid. We're just going to have to see what Jinro wants to take up to here. Here's another shot of our studio. Got a good look at that there. Got to show you guys that studio. It's a beautiful studio. We have a very sexy studio. By the way, if you guys ever come... To Korea, you are welcome to come to the GOMTV.net studios. Um, whether it be the finals or, you know, f final four, start of the tournament, whenever. Uh, entry is free. So feel free to check us out. Absolutely. You see Idra following up with a spawning pool and a gas. Very standard that SCV scout is based. Now, Jinro getting a reasonably quick factory. Not the fastest, though. So I think... We may see Jinro go into perhaps his uh, single Banshee. He loves to get you know a single Banshee to expand. It kind of gives him some map control in the early parts of the game before any mutalisks are out. Yeah, yeah, that's absolutely right. Um, we could have that now. Idra, uh, actually, both Idra and Jinro really not known for rushing early, but Jinro I think has a more diverse style. Yeah, then Jinro Idra. has a lot more build orders that he normally pulls out, but Idra is showing us something a little bit new here. He has planned and planned and planned for this match, and as we see on the production tab, a Roach Warren is being built. So that is very contrary to his normal style of speed links. Yeah, he's mixing it up here. You know, when you get two non-Korean players out here, they tend to know each other's style pretty well because obviously there's not going to be that many people you're communicating with uh, yep. About StarCraft 2 in person. Very, very true, but these two are such rivals at this point. Now, we see some Marines coming down. A little bit of pressure. Hydra doesn't have a ton of units, but he does have some Roaches building, and of course, Roaches, pretty ownage against Marines, Tasteless. I don't think that these uh, Marines are going to do too much. He may try to assassinate the Queen, meanwhile, push this Hellion up the ramp. Uh, this is a very good build against what Hydra normally does. But he does have those roaches, so General going to run away immediately. And lucky now for him. Now the roaches are off that creep, it's going to be a little bit harder to catch up to the Marines. That's right. By a little bit harder, we mean pretty much impossible. Those Marines are going to get out of there yeah. relatively easily. Now, that's going to throw General off a little bit. You know, it's no one's really used to Idra doing different builds. But we see General. He is going to tech up, it looks like, to a Banshee. And also has that uh, command center being made. So... Looks like he's going to do a very safe, normal build. And the Roaches, they may be able to do a little bit of damage here, Tasteless. There is not a lot oh, up here. Whoa! Almost and, did wow. not land that in time. It does land. And, uh, well, the Roaches have less range than the Marines, but not by a whole lot. This uh, moment we're seeing here, oh my god, that was actually pretty smart. Maybe going for the tech lab there. The moment we're seeing here is similar to a Dragoon Rush in StarCraft 1. Yeah. Uh, with the Dragoons basically trying to pick off the Marines um, and maybe the tank if they get a shot off. That's right. They have, uh, they're have they really strong against the Marines, so Jinro has to be very careful with this micro. The barracks is getting pretty low. I yeah. think it's at about 25% health. And Idra might actually break the barracks here. Some SCVs are coming down. Idra picking those off. These Roaches doing some good harassment damage, and it looks like this barracks could, in fact, go down. Uh, Jinro's falling apart. He already sent the mule out. Banshee's now out. Probably might as well just go ahead and keep attacking that barracks. Oh, no. Smart movie's going to split them up. Yeah, That's going to force the Banshee. One of them. Yeah, that's going to force the Banshee to waste time trying to find them. Now, Idra has lost, I mean, uh, General has lost a few SCVs, lost a mule there, lost some repair time. So uh, that was certainly very annoying for him. And now we do have, uh, it looks like he's going to float out that starport to be part of a wall-in. 
And he's going to go ahead and take his expansion. Good he, usage of that starboard right now. It'd be a right good now. moment right now for um, Aydra to go ahead and plant that roach underneath the command center so it can't land. Yeah, harass as much as he can. Notice he does kill an SCV there. Very annoying for Jinro. Trying to take out some Marines as well, but the Banshee will clean that up. Now, Spire on the way. Ooh, uh, that is actually quite interesting. Hydra going to transition his Spire. He's gotten some good damage off. Has decided that it is time tasteless to go for a Spire. He loves those Mutalisks. But right now, the big story is the drone count. Hydra has 43 drones against just 31 SCVs, so his economy is doing just beautifully right now. Yeah, he's playing really well. Um, this is interesting. I think... Jinro is in a tough position. Uh, no, what Jinro's going to have to do when you're behind like this, take the gold base, hold the gold base for as long as you can, and uh, try to pull through the wind from there. Hydra's going to want to stall him from destroying those rocks. Hydra may take the uh, mineral only, or uh, rather the blue um, base behind the gold base, um, and try to do a macro game. We'll see. Now, this Banshee doing a great job. It's controlling some creep tumors. He's already killed a couple of them. Just kind of keeping Hydra stuck in his base where the Queens are, but as Mutalus will be made pretty shortly here, uh, that Banshee shouldn't do too, too much. Banshee almost killed off there. Yep. Seven Mutas and plus one being started. In the meantime, General getting Stim and starting his Marines up, getting that Engineering Bay. It's almost done, so he's going to want to get some turrets up pretty quick. And he still does not know about that, uh, that Spire Tasteless. Might catch him a little bit off guard. Oh! Took out the Banshee. That Banshee can't be remade. As you can see, the starport not connected to the tech lab, so that's the only Banshee we may see for this entire game. Yeah, I think that's quite and likely, that's especially now that the Mutalisks are out Tasteless. Banshee's not too good against those. And the Muta's gonna fly up the map now. We're gonna have to see what damage Idra can do. That's gonna really factor in to how this game goes. Talk about good turret timing. Yeah, that's... The turret literally finishes within one second of the Muta's killing it off. Now, what he wants to do is force Hydra to stim, take out SCVs and stray Marines. Whatever he can do. Oh, like this. There you go. Perfect. Takes out a... Whoa! Takes out one medevac. Uh, looks like he wants to take another. It has a lot of SCVs in it. Oh, it's too bad he did not actually get that. Yeah. The Muta's coming up now. Gonna he harass lost, some more SCVs. He lost about three Mutalisks there. Yeah, he did, but he is killing off some SCVs here. Doing some reasonable uh, harassment damage and forcing a stim there. Keeping the medevac number down is gonna help that out. Now, Ijo with an additional hatch being made. That's gonna be his fourth hatch to help macro. Looks like he's planning on speedling banelings with speed and uh, Mutalisks as well. So the Mutalisks managed to get out. The rocks being taken out now at the gold base. Hydra switching into the Baneling tech. This is standard mid-game uh, ZBT. Yep. At least the makeup, uh, the unit makeup here. You know, Baneling speed is being made. Hydra is droning up his third base. In fact, right now, Hydra is up to 65 drones against just 51 SCVs from Jinro. So Hydra definitely winning the economy war right now. Jinro needs to take out these rocks, but note when he's attacking those rocks, uh, his main base and expansion base are vulnerable. We may see some Mutalisk harassment in the main base. Comes. Hydra flying in, trying to kill off any add-ons, oh. any units popping out, things like that. Beautiful moves by Hydra. Nice job taking out the Tech Lab. With the Tech Lab gone, less Siege Tank. Siege Tank's basically the counter to Banelings. The rocks are gone. Hydra getting now into an offensive position. I don't know if Jinro should be out on the map yet. I feel like Hydra's presence is a little bit too strong. You know, it is a scary presence, but at the same time, Jinro being very proactive at taking his third base, I'm certain he'll lay down a planetary, and if that planetary oh, gets to. up, he's going to have a beautiful foothold on the map. I almost feel like any Terran who doesn't get a planetary fortress at that gold base would be insane. Yes. Uh, the strategic position that gives you. Hold that thought, though. Here come the Mutas and Zerglings and wow. Bane Lakes. Hydra doing a great job taking out those C-Tanks immediately the Mutas. And then the Marines have to run from the Banelings a bit, but Hydra may want to be careful here. Does have that additional Bane and does end up having to run away. But he has taken out a reasonable amount of Marines as well as a few Siege Shanks. And that's going to help him out in the future with his Banelings. Note that he did take out the Tech Lab earlier on. Um, so that's going to be less tanks uh, on the map for a while. Yeah. I believe he may only have one additional tank out uh, right now. Yeah, right now yeah, he right actually now has one. no tanks. No, excuse me, that's a Just Thor. Just a Thor. So, uh, 
Hydra doing a pretty good job thus far. Right now, they're very close on drone versus SCV, 66 to 66. That's so close. <gasps> That's about as the close same as number. You can get. Stim, he's running for it. Hydra punishing General for coming out a little bit too far. Magic boxing to Thor. Thor being taken out. Uh, nice splits by Jinro, but Speedling's coming as well. And Hydra really wants to try to deny this third base as long as possible. So many Mutalists flying in here, taking out a lot of Marines. And Hydra does have to turn around as Jinro falls back. He's going to take out this turret. That's going to make this uh, base basically naked. He, the uh, Marines force the Mutalists and the Zerglings to retreat. He needs to get those turrets up very quickly. That's right, Tate. So it's uh, a naked base. It is wrong. He's it's clothing not, it up with some it's turrets. It's not a good kind of naked. You know, it's not that, oh, that's hot and sexy naked. It's like, no, I just don't have turrets. I'm going to die to mutalisks naked. That's like, <laughs> yeah, it's opening the worst a jar of pickles naked, tasteless. <laughs> it's not a good thing. <laughs> All right. We do have Idra taking his gold base, still staying on his layer tech. He does have an infestation pit. So, oh, just now starting that hive on the production tab, as we see. Mutalisks getting ready for some more harassment as well. And there's a lot of Thors. You may just want to target them down. Oh, that's going to cost General a lot of minerals, losing yeah. two Thors out of five. I mean, mules. Mules are <laughs> same thing. They're both unbelievably good. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we have more Banelings on the way. Very nice barracks positioning here. Similar to what we saw from... Um, oh, now I'm forgetting his ID. What was his ID that we saw yesterday in yesterday's games, Code A? I don't know, just some guy. Some guy. We saw some positioning like this in, pre in previous games. Um, utilizing the Terrence's ability to land. Uh, buildings lift off buildings. Now, Hydra in the main oh, with the Mutalist. Very good timing. He does have the plus one attack. Jinro is stretched out a little bit beyond his means. And Hydra taking down the reactors. That is huge. They take a very long time to make. Very good move by Hydra to at least take down. Well, he only got one of them because the SCV is going to repair it. Still, very nice move there by Hydra. Hydra may have forced his opponent to relocate. Now, there's one technique you can use a Zerg, um, and that's where you do a Baneling mass push into the uh, planetary fortress, try to just blow it up. Yeah. Um, which can catch people off guard. And you can see Hydra, I mean, uh, Jinro at its expansion, has already uh, basically walled off that a little bit with the depots, made it a little bit more difficult to do that. That is quite true, Tasteless. Now, Hydra moving up. He has a ton of units. He is maxed out at 200 supply. Jinro at 161. And Hydra's just going to go for it. Just running in so many banelings. If he can hit the Marines with those, the Mutalists can clean up the rest. And Hydra taking his lead <laughs> into what may be a very quick victory here against Jinro. Oh, my God. His Mutalists absolutely destroying everything Jinro has at the expansion. And Jinro's going to have a hard time. More banelings rolling up the ramp. And if he can float over these barracks, Tasteless, it's hard to imagine anything popping out that can actually take out this huge Mutalist Swarm. No, he's taking out the factory. That means no more Thors, no more Siege Tanks. Bailey's going to be too strong. GG! There he is. Hydra takes GG. down game one. Damn. Absolutely stellar play, Tasteless. GG Hydra dominating in that game. Actually a fairly one-sided game from start to finish. When we saw the uh, small push denied, then we saw the roaches attacking the barracks. So you know, I, killed. I think that made all the difference. When you think yeah. about what actually happened in that game, oh, let sure. Hydra get into that position. The thing is, if you let Hydra get ahead of you for even a minute, he's going to have so many drones that he's going to outmacker you all game long. Now, what happened was he made those roaches. That's not something Jimro is used to from Hydra. In fact, he had the four Marine, one Hellion push. Now, that's a very strong push against any Zergling-based openings. But Hydra, in fact, went for Roaches, so that push did zero. He immediately counterattacked with the Roaches, killed off some SCVs, got a mule off, uh, almost killed the barracks, and then Jinro was just behind from there, and Hydra's like, okay, I'm pretty safe. I see a Banshee, third queen, tech up, go Mutas. Everything just worked out perfectly for him from there. Yeah, it was pretty – everything he said is right. Uh, basically, I, I look, you and me have both experienced playing Hydra uh, in, in a competitive environment. We've – we were actually both his teammates in StarCraft 1. Uh, when Idrick gets ahead of you, you actually can't catch up. No, because his macro is just that's too That's the thing. People oftentimes say, you know, that is his great weakness is that he always macros. But when all you do is macro, you become unbelievably good at it. You become pretty good at, good at it, it uh, yeah. to say the very least. So the countdown's begun. Let's get ready for game number two and see if General can come back or if Idrick is going to close this out.
With Tasis and Artosis, this is the GSL.